The Paraclete versus the Holy Spirit. The Evidence, Part 1. Did Jesus ever say that the Paraclete was the Holy Spirit? Did Jesus ever say that he was going to send another Holy Spirit? Did Jesus ever refer to the Holy Spirit as the Paraclete? The answer is a resounding no. I will now provide the evidence and reveal what Jesus was really saying. In John 14, 16, Jesus was not speaking of sending any Holy Spirit or any spirit of the truth, but he was speaking of sending another man like him. Now I will fully begin to reveal what Jesus was really saying and what the Bible is really all about. I will not hold back anything. I will speak clearly and reveal all I know regarding this matter. As I explain and reveal in my other videos, the word spirit does not mean invisible entity or being. It means a way of thinking. This is the real abstract meaning of the word spirit and how it is used in the Bible. Let me begin by showing you verses right from the Bible. I don't have to do any kind of mental gymnastics to try to prove my point like other Christians do, trying to explain the, the Trinity as if it was some mystery or something that cannot be understood, well, now I am giving you the clear answer with evidence, factual evidence and logical evidence from the Bible. Okay, and I am going to use the verses from the Bible that speak about the paraclete, the advocate. Here is John 14.1. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, also in me believe. Here in John 14, 1, Jesus here is speaking about his departure. And he's reassuring his disciples that he is one with God. Now, the important point to see here is that Jesus is speaking about only two individuals here. God and him other father and him there is no mention of any holy spirit here if god was made up of three individuals or persons like trinitarians say then jesus would have said believe in us but he didn't the holy spirit is completely left out john 14:2 and this is my translation. I, I use my translation so, the, so that you can clearly see and understand what the Bible is talking about. In my Father's house are many dwellings, or else I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. John 14, 2, Jesus is telling his disciples that he is going to his Father's house and he's going to prepare a place for them. Wouldn't this be the Holy Spirit's house too? But he doesn't mention any Holy Spirit, just him and the Father. John 14, 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, again I am coming and will take you home unto myself that where I am ye also may be John 14 3 here we see Jesus going to prepare a place for them and Jesus himself is coming back to take them to that place Jesus never mentions that he's going to send some Holy Spirit to take them to the Father's house it is Jesus and the Father only, no mention of any Holy Spirit, no mention of Jesus sending someone else. John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, 
Now you have to understand that this is my translation. I am this persona of God. I am this truth of God. I am this life of God. No one comes unto the Father, which is God, but through me. I want you to notice here that this is my this is my version. This is so that you can clearly understand what Jesus is saying. Jesus was not saying that he is the truth, because Jesus in many places tells you that the words that he spoke were not from him. So he cannot be claiming to be the truth. <laughs> Jesus did not say that he was the way. He said that he was the way of God, the persona of God, the truth of God, and the life of God. And then he reinforces this by saying, no one comes to the Father but through him. Notice that there is no mention of any Holy Spirit coming or going or being included in this equation. John 14, 7. If you had been getting to know me, my Father also had you known from now on you are getting to know him and have perceived him. In the King James Version says, and have seen him. But that is that is a, uh, an error because they, you cannot see God. Okay, John 14, 7. Jesus cannot be any more clear. They are getting to know the Father. But there is no mention of getting to know any Holy Spirit. If God is an individual and Jesus is an individual, wouldn't the Holy Spirit also be an individual, individual for them to get to know? And now I am going to blow your mind. What is it that they are getting to know? They are getting to know the Holy Spirit. But you, 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 you notice here that the Holy Spirit is not mentioned because the Holy Spirit is not a person, like you say a person, what a person means. It's not an individual. It's not an entity. But this is what they are getting to know, which is the way of thinking. The way of thinking of God is what they are getting to know. They are getting to know the set apart way of thinking of God. This is what Jesus has been presenting to them. The set apart spirit of God. They are getting to know the set apart way of thinking of God. That is what Jesus has been presenting to them. The set apart spirit of God, which you call the Holy Spirit. But as you can clearly see, the Holy Spirit is not some additional individual within the Godhead because I have just shown you verse by verse proving to you with evidence that there is no Trinity. John 14.10 Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The things which I am saying unto you from myself I speak not but the Father abiding in me does the work. He is res Jesus is resp responding to Philip. Notice how Jesus says that he is in the Father and the Father is in him. He is saying the Father and Trinitarians claim that the Father is not the Holy Spirit, but Jesus is completely leaving out the Holy Spirit because Jesus knows that there is no such thing. He doesn't even talk about any Holy Spirit individual. How does the Father abide in Jesus? The same way Jesus abides in the disciples, by faith in his words. There is no literal Father abiding in Jesus, and there is no spirit entity abiding in Jesus and certainly no Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit, the way of thinking of God, which God is a judging system that is abiding in Jesus. Again, this evidence that there is no such individual called the Holy Spirit 
this is evidence that there is no such individual called the Holy Spirit. Another thing to notice about this Holy Spirit is that it is not called a father or mother or son or daughter or uncle, nothing. Even God is called the Father. Even the angels are messengers, even with names like Michael. But this Holy Spirit uh, ghost is not. Why? Because this is the breath of God. And breath is not an entity. And you cannot turn breath into an entity. You cannot do it because you cannot turn the wind into a being or an individual. Now we have here the famous, famous John 14, 16. And this is my translation. And I will desire of the Father and another advocate will he give unto you that he may be with you into the age. It could be into the age or to the age, but it does not say to be with you forever. Okay? Now, if you notice there, and I have been uh, write, writing it underneath, the Father equals God, and God equals the Father. It doesn't say that God equals the Father and, and, and the Holy Spirit and Jesus. No, God is the Father. Okay? Now, John 14, 16. Again, we see Jesus asking the Father, what is the Father for? What is, what is he asking the Father for? He is asking for another one like him. What is Jesus? Jesus was a human being, a man. He was not a ghost. He was not a divine being that came flying down from heaven. He had a human father and a human mother. And he died and he's dead. Has been dead for 2,000 years. He was a prophet. Yes, he was more than a prophet. Because he was called the Son of God. Okay? The unique Son of God. But he was just a man. And he is the one that is speaking. Okay? And he says that he's going to ask for another one like him. Not another individual from the Godhead but another teacher, prophet like him. Jesus has, has already made it clear to them that he was sent by the Father and that everything he taught, it was revealed to him by the Father and not by some Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the way of thinking of the Father. But it's not a thing, it's not an entity, or it's not a force. It doesn't exist. It is a way of thinking, a way of thinking. Since John 14, since John 14, 1, Jesus has not mentioned any, anything of any Holy Spirit. He himself had told them that he was the one coming back. But according to, Trini to the Trinitarian, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are two separate individuals. But Jesus never said anything about sending another individual. He said that he himself was the one coming back. But you have to understand that when Jesus spoke, he says that his words, his words were not his, his. So when he was speaking, it was the words of God that were speaking through the prophets, through this man. So when he is telling them that he is coming back, it is not him. The one that's coming back is the persona of God and the logos of God, but not a physical man. That's what exactly what he's saying. Jesus is a messenger from God, a human messenger. Why would he send some invisible entity or force that the disciples knew nothing about? 
John 14, 16, it's very clear that Jesus is talking about another one like him, which is actually him, but not him literally. When Jesus said, I will come unto you, he was not speaking of his physical self. The I that he speaks of is the persona and the logos of the Father and no one else. John 14, 18. I will not leave you orphans. I am coming unto you. I mean, this is crystal clear, crystal clear that Jesus is not saying that he's going to send the other person of the Trinity called the Holy Spirit, because he's telling you right here, I will not leave you orphans. I am coming to you. And Trinitarians say, say that Jesus is not the Father and Jesus is not the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is not Jesus and the Holy Spirit is not the Father. You could see clearly right here that Jesus is not sending anyone else in the sense somebody from the Godhead. John 14, 18 is pure evidence that Jesus was not speaking of sending some Holy Spirit. Right here, Jesus confirms to them that it is He the one that is coming back to them. If Jesus was speaking, was speaking of sending some Holy Spirit, He would have said it. I will not, He would have said, I will not leave you orphans. The Holy Spirit is coming to you. But that is not what he says. And it is clear in this verse that Jesus is the one coming back. And when I say Jesus, I am speaking about the anointed one, the Messiah, but not the physical man that lived 2,000 years ago. John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, this is because a previous verse, Judah, Judas was asking, okay, not, not uh, Judas Iscariot, but the other Judas. Uh, so Jesus is answering him, if any man be loving me, and I already explained, I think I explained it in another video, if not, I will explain it again. What Jesus means when, when he says, love me, he did not say to love him, the physical man, Jesus. That's not what he was saying. He was talking about his teachings. If any man be loving me, my word, you see, that's why he's talking about his word. He will keep and my father, my father will love him. Notice that he doesn't say anything about the Holy Spirit. I mean, isn't the Holy Spirit included in this triune loving relationship? But the Holy Spirit is not mentioned. And unto him, we will come. So Jesus says, we will come. When he says, we will come, he's talking about himself and the Father. Because he, he doesn't mention anybody else. And an abode... Remember that in John 14, 2, what he says, I go to prepare a place for you. But Christians think that Jesus was literally going somewhere to prepare something. No, he was not. And in my other videos, I will explain exactly what he was, was saying. Okay. And an abode with him, we, the Father and him, will make. Who is in Jesus? The Father, right? And Jesus, all right? So there's only two, the Father and Jesus and, <laughs> and, the, and the way of thinking. And this way of thinking, but not some other entity, not some force, not some electromagnetic field, nothing. It is a way of thinking. So John 14, 23, this verse cannot be any more clear. Jesus is speaking again of the Father and Him. They, the Father and Him, will come to those who love Him. How can the Holy Spirit not be involved in this union? Well, you can clearly see that Jesus is only speaking of the Father and Himself. John 14, 26, which is the number one verse the Trinitarians use, and even all the Christians that are not Trinitarian, 
to say that Jesus was sending some Holy Spirit or, or his own spirit or Jesus coming back in spirit form, which is ridiculous and nonsense, utter nonsense. Okay, John 14, 26. Okay, and I left it here so you could see the top, uh, the top version here is the King James Version, which completely and utterly destroys and distorts what Jesus is saying. Okay, and then underneath here is my, my verse. John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, and you will see Christians, I'm talking about educated people with, with master, de master degrees, scholars, repeating this, this distortion. Okay? You see people on YouTube any day repeating this nonsense. And of course, nonsense spreads like wildfire. And only those who are not looking for the truth will swallow this, this nonsense, okay? So, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, remembrance whatsoever. I have said unto you, okay, now this is the bottom of my translation, but the advocate, okay, because this is an advocate like Jesus, this person, okay, because the advocate is this person, like the person of Christ, the person of Christ is not some other entity, it is the way of thinking of Christ. It is the persona of Christ. When Jesus was on earth, he was the advocate. And he was he was this person, this spirit of the truth. How can anyone say that this verse is talking about some entity, the Holy Spirit? If it was true, then the verse would be written the other way. But the Holy Spirit the comforter but the verse does not what the verse says it says but the comforter the spirit of course the word holy it is already found in all in older manuscripts that the word holy was inserted inserted there by trinitarians or by someone just like the word wish which is not in any manuscript Okay. And like I say, like I said, even if the word Holy Spirit, which is not Holy Spirit, is set apart person, set apart persona, set apart way of thinking, okay, it still does not say that, that Jesus is sending some set apart way of thinking because that makes no sense. So the, the, the correct way to understand this verse also, I have explained this and I revealed this in Aramaic which no one has ever done no one because there's another problem here because the being that the word spirit in hebrew and aramaic is feminine no one knows knew what to do with that word because they the only thing they they, they could do is they say she she the holy spirit but that makes no sense because this is that's not what this is saying if you do not understand what the word means, you will never know what the verse is saying because you don't know the meaning of the word. But the advocate, this person, this persona, whom, okay, whom, because he's talking about the advocate, whom the Father will send. Didn't the Father send Jesus? Well, now he's sending someone else. He is transmitting someone else. Will send in my character, in the logos. He, the advocate, not some invisible entity or ghost or force like the Jehovah Witness say. He 
will teach you all things. All things, all things? He's going to teach you science and chemistry and all those things? No. All things regarding what God is, okay? All things regarding the persona, okay? He's not talking about mathematics or computers or anything else, okay? And will put in your mind or will remember, remind you of all things which I told you, okay? That is John 14, 26. And then I have some extra information that I wrote down here. Trinitarians will use this verse to say, to say, you see, the paraclete is the Holy Spirit. But nowhere in this verse does it say anything, even remotely close to that. The first distortion here is that the word wish is not found in any manuscript. So this word was intentionally placed here there by the trinitarians to make a sound to make a sound in english of course as if jesus is speaking of sending some holy spirit entity or being or persona whatever you want to call it but the word which is not there but the word is not which is not there and the word holy is not found in the oldest manuscript either and even if the word Holy Spirit was there, it doesn't mean Holy Spirit. It means set apart persona. The set apart persona would be the persona of the paraclete, but not some independent agency or agent. So you can clearly see here how much this verse has been twisted and distorted to push the doctrine of the Trinity. I just finished showing, showing all the verses that Jesus is clearly speaking about one like him coming back, not some other independent agency, and of course not Muhammad. It cannot be any more clear. Okay, I added uh, some extra information here, and um, I wanted to show you how, how Trinitarians and Christians say that, that the King James Version of the Bible is the divine uh, inspired version of the Bible, that is without error, that it is inspired by the Holy Spirit, which is utter nonsense. The King James Bible is one of the worst translations of the Bible if I ever seen one, that I ever seen, okay? Notice here the revised King James New Testament. It doesn't say they took out the word wish. You see here, they took it out from the top. Uh, it just says, but the comfort of the Holy Spirit when the Father will say, he will send in my name, okay? Now, underneath is the other one, the modern King James Version. Oh, again, the word wish that says wish is the Holy Spirit is taken out. Okay? It's completely taken out because they they knew that they made a mistake. If it wasn't a mistake, then why didn't they leave it there? Okay? Now, let me show you John 14, 28. Okay? You heard that I said unto you, Okay? He, he's, he's even reminding them, reminding them. You heard that I said unto you, I go my way, okay? Or I'm going away, and I come unto you, okay? If Jesus was speaking of the Holy Spirit as the advocate, he would have said it here and in, and in every other place. He would have said, I go my way, but I'm sending the Holy Spirit to you or someone else to you but he didn't he did he doesn't say it had ye loved me ye would have rejoiced that I am going unto the Father okay he's not going unto the Father and the Holy Spirit he's going to the Father because remember that supposedly the 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 advocate hasn't come yet that means that the Holy Spirit and the Father are in heaven but he's not going to the Holy Spirit 
he's going to the Father. He completely ignores any, anybody else because there is nobody else. There is no one else. For the Father is greater than I. He doesn't say for the Father is greater than the Holy Spirit and I. He doesn't say for the Father is equal to the Holy Spirit like Trinitarian says that they are co-equal. Nothing, nothing of the sort happens here. Okay, nothing at all. So John 14, 28, another powerful verse in which Jesus clearly tells his disciples that he is the one coming back. In any court of law, any judge will throw the Trinity case out the door because they have no evidence. Nowhere in the Bible there's not even one single verse that says that the Comforter is the Holy Spirit. You are seeing the evidence right before your eyes, and I don't have to use any kind of mental gymnastic to prove what the Bible is clearly saying. I told you that I was going to destroy religion. I am going to destroy Christianity because Christianity is garbage, pure garbage. Now we have here John 15, 9. Jesus says, just as the Father loved me. He doesn't say just as the Father and the Holy Spirit loved me. He says, just as the Father loved me, I also love you. Abide ye in my love. No mention of any Holy Spirit. Okay, John 15, 10. If my ordinance, or uh, because Jesus never gave any commandments, if my teachings ye keep, ye shall abide in my love, just, just as I, the Father's teachings, or the Torah, have kept and abide in His love, in His will, in His good will. Okay? He doesn't mention any Holy Spirit. Okay? Trinitarians claim that God must be three persons because one person cannot show love to himself. But here you have the evidence that Jesus is speaking about the Father loving Jesus. He mentions nothing about a third person loving Jesus or the Father. There is zero mention of any Holy Spirit. John 15, 23. He that hateth me hateth my Father right here okay he, he if there was if the holy spirit was like like preachers i hear preachers say that the holy spirit is the most important person the most important person so the father is not the most important person and jesus is not the most important person is the holy spirit the most important person you will hear preachers on youtube and everywhere else saying that the holy spirit is the most important person well Jesus doesn't mention him or her or it or whatever. No, it's, it's not mentioned. He that hateth me hateth my father. That hateth the Holy Spirit. John 15, 24. Had I not done among them the works which no other has done, violations which is sin, had they none. But now have they both seen perceived, hated both me and my father. Clear, me and my father. Not my uncle, not uh, my friend, no, 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 me and my father. John 16, 16, uh, 3. And these things will they do because they got to know neither the father nor me. Again, no mention of any Holy Spirit. John 16, 8, and having come, okay, this is another verse that, that Christians completely distort and make up ridiculous uh, concepts, okay, and theories, okay, and having come, he's talking about the advocate, he's talking about a man like him, okay, he will reprove the world with evidence concerning, uh, it's not here, but it's supposed to be there, concerning sin, 
concerning violation, concerning rightness, righteousness, and concerning judgment. Okay? John 16, 8, it is impossible that this verse is speaking about any Holy Spirit for one simple fact. Christians don't know what this means. This convicting, they do not know what this means because Christians, you see, you have to understand this because when you Christians read the Bible, I really don't know what is it that you're looking for. Christians preach, they preach Jesus. Right? That's what they preach. They preach Jesus. Okay? I have to I have to put uh, I have to put the verse. But Jesus said, I think it's 69. Uh, but Jesus said that the world did not believe in him. Okay? Did not believe in him. Jesus did not his message the world did not receive okay did not so I also because of course since Christians are 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 hitting a big wall and they can't do anything about it I hear preachers saying that the Holy Spirit inside of them which of course they have to resort to this now because they say that the, the Holy Spirit is the paraclete, but they know that a spirit, an invisible thing, is not going to be talking or preaching to people. So they say that the Holy Spirit, through them, through the Christians, convicts people. But that is a huge, huge lie and a huge error. First of all, Jesus said that He the paraclete, the advocate, was the one that was going to do these things. Christians are not the advocate because Christians are, are, are a walking contradiction. How can you have 39,000 denominations preaching different things and convicting atheists that atheists do not accept Christians? It is ridiculous, it is barbaric to say anything like that, okay? But since since Trinitarians and Christians say, wait a minute, but, but how is the Holy Spirit gonna convict the world? When Jesus says that the world cannot receive or neither know us this or anything like that, how could they do it? So then they say that through Christians, which is exactly what I am saying, but it's, it's, it's through me, through one man, and it is not some Holy Spirit. First of all, it is the spirit of the truth, which is the way of thinking of the truth, with which none of you have, because you have gone the wrong way. Then another thing is here is that Christians do not know what this means, what convicting the world means. They do not know what this means. So how can you convict the world if you don't know what this means? And you haven't done it. The world is still the world. There has been no judgment. Show me the day of the judgment. Show me when it happened that the world got convicted. This has never happened. This means that you are a bunch of liars. Liars is what you are. The world has never been judged because the day of judgment hasn't come. How can you say that you convict the world, that you have convicted? It's been 2,000 years. The only human alive that knows what this means is me. And un until I don't reveal it, it will remain a mystery. How can the Holy Spirit convict with evidence the world when the world cannot receive, neither knows? the Holy Spirit, which is in truth the spirit of the truth that Jesus was speaking of. Okay? The way of thinking, the way of thinking of the truth. John 16, 13. How be it as soon as he has come, this spirit, the spirit of truth. Of course, this is not my translation. I should have changed it, but it's okay. He will guide you into all the truth. 
the Holy Spirit has not guided Christians into all the truth because you have 39,000 denominations, not counting the Catholics or counting the Catholics and the Mormons and the Jehovah Witness and whatever. You don't have the truth. You cannot even teach Christianity in a school because you will never decide on who is the one that's going to teach which doctrine are you going to teach. That means that you don't have the truth. Uh, for he will not speak from himself. Okay, again, this cannot be some Holy Spirit which is co-equal to God and not speak from himself. All the Christians twist this scripture, they twist this scripture, and they say, they, they translate it, which is, you know, they translate us, he will not speak uh, of himself. But that's not what the, what the, what the text is saying. He said, he said he will not speak from himself, just like Jesus says, I do not speak from myself, from my own authority. This is exactly the same thing. But what's, now, now I am going to reveal something here, which is something that I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't do in my videos on the end of Islam, but I am going to reveal it now. I didn't want to reveal it before because I didn't want the Muslim using this uh, uh, using this uh, as something that belonged to them. Of course, they never they never revealed it. They never said it. Uh, Muslims uh, Muslims claim that the Muhammad that they take this verse uh, where it says whatsoever he hears he will speak, and then they use the word hears and speak, and they go through the Greek. And they go through a lot of explanation, trying to prove that this was a human, uh, a human being that was that was actually hearing words with with his human ears and speaking words through his literal mouth. But this is not what this verse is saying. Whatsoever he heareth means whatsoever he understands. Because I have never heard any any voices in my head or anything okay so this hearing like in the bible says they hear but they do not understand okay this hearing is understand he will speak whatever he understands and this is exactly what i am doing i am only telling you what i know about this and he will speak okay didn't jesus tell the disciples when you speak it will not be you speaking by your father, but the father speaking through you. But who was doing the real uh, 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 speaking, the real physical speaking? It was the it was the disciples. But the speaking that is talking about here is not is not the physical speaking, but the words that are being transmitted, the logos, the persona, and the persona. Okay, that's what this verse is saying. Then, and the coming things or future things he will announce to you. Never any Christians has, has declared coming things or future things, neither Muhammad, of, of, of these things that Jesus spoke about. Okay, if you have them, tell me where they are. Okay, I know you, I know you don't have them. You don't even know what Jesus is talking about. Okay, so let me finish with John 13, 16, 13. This also has never happened. There is no Holy Spirit that has guided Christians into all the truth. Christianity has been a disaster right from the beginning and now has more than 39,000 denominations and all contradicting each other. Not only that, Christians are constantly listening and asking questions to pastors, preachers, and everyone in between. When supposedly the Holy Spirit was to guide them into all the truth, the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit is your teacher, which the Holy Spirit, according to Christian, is God, co equal to God, why would there be any Christians on YouTube or on any book or any essays or any church teaching or preaching when, when the Holy Spirit is the teacher? But there is no such thing. 
and that's what makes you uh, liars. That's what you are, liars. John 16, 14. He, the paraclete, the advocate, okay, not some Holy Spirit, will glorify me or will honor me. For of mine shall he receive and announce it, announce unto you. Let me read John 16, 15. All things whatsoever the Father hath are my own. Not the Holy Spirit, the Father, are my own. Therefore said I, of mine shall he receive and announce it unto you. John 16, 14. This is another verse. Okay, that I just read to you, that completely destroys the Trinity. All prophets have been guided by the Spirit of Holiness, which you call the Holy Spirit. All of them, all prophets, all true prophets, let me say it that way, including Jesus. Okay, including Jesus. How can Jesus say, that the Holy Spirit is going to receive from him and announce it to you when it was Jesus who received from the Spirit of Holiness and pass it down to his disciples. Jesus could have only been speaking of a man who will explain Jesus' teachings. Christian, Christians rely on their own studying and human teaches to teach in the Bible. There is no Holy Spirit going around teaching Christians about the Bible. If there were, there would not be, like I said, 39,000 denominations. So right here, you are dead in the water, in the water without a lifesaver. The Holy Spirit is not gonna take anything from Jesus because Jesus was taught by the Holy Spirit, by the set-apart way of thinking that he had, and the way of thinking of the truth. So, case closed. John 16, 27, for the Father himself dearly loves you because ye have dearly loved me and believe that I from the Father not from the Holy Spirit came forth okay and remember that according to Christians and the and the ridiculous virgin birth Jesus came from the Holy Spirit but that's not what Jesus is saying here that's why the the, the virgin birth is another lie of Christianity, okay? Another uh, mythology lie. Okay, so in John, already John, we already in John 16, 27, here is another verse that doesn't mention the Holy Spirit loving Jesus, only the Father. Jesus by now will have told the disciples about the Holy Spirit, especially since they were going to, to receive this Holy Spirit, he, he, he would have prepared them to tell them about this Holy Spirit. But he didn't, because there is no such thing taught in the Bible. So, okay, I'm almost done here. 1628, I came forth out of the Father, okay, again, and have come into the world, okay? Again, I leave the world and go unto the Father. Okay? Uh, Jesus did not literally come out of any Father. Jesus did not come into a literal world. He's not speaking of any literal world. And, and since He did not come into any literal world, world he does not, He's not living the literal world. He did not live the literal world to return uh, into a into a literal place up in the sky or or anywhere again he doesn't mention there's no mention of, of any uh, holy spirit 
Now, uh, 1632, Lo, there cometh an hour, and hath come, that ye should be scattered, each unto his own home, and me alone should live. And yet I am not alone, but the Father, the Father, the Father is with me. Here's another verse that smashes the Trinity into pieces. Jesus tells them that he is not alone, that the Father is with him. Notice that it is the Father alone that is with Jesus. No mention whatsoever of any Holy Spirit being with Jesus. This is the end of part one. I have provided more than sufficient evidence that Jesus never spoke of any Holy Spirit called the Paraclete. In part two, I will begin to reveal what Jesus was really speaking about. Thank you for watching. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. You don't want to miss an my other videos where I will be revealing things that have never been revealed before.